this question of balancing interests in, in regulation. I think, you know, big picture, my, my, my sort of starting point here is that the idea of balancing uh, different interests, different objectives is, is, is perfectly normal in, in regulation and, and in, in, in policy making you know, more generally. It's, it's to be expected. Data protection, um, I think this was mentioned earlier, you know, has, has perhaps traditionally, you know, as the name suggests, focused on protection of data. Um, and um, you know, when we look at when we look at the, the text and the legislation, yes, um, you know, uh, we have uh, you know, commissioner will have regard to the importance of you know, level of protection for, for personal data. That that sort of takes um, takes primacy, but it's it's qualified. It's um, it's not just the level of uh, protection. It's it's an appropriate uh, level of protection, and it's um, it's also taking into account various other. Uh, interest. So, you know, this idea of, uh, of balance is, is there from the start. And similarly, if we look at, uh, if we look at GDPR, I'm sure you're familiar with, with Recital 4, um, you know, um, protection of personal data, not an absolute right, um, but needs to be balanced against other uh, fundamental rights. So the legislation, you know, straight off recognises this need for, uh, for balance. Now I should say when, um, when when Stuart and Laura and I first uh, first sort of discussed this this session, um, I was due to talk about the the DPDI bill um, and the uh, you know the new uh, sort of secondary duties uh, that that was set to introduce uh, in relation to um, economic growth, competition, and uh, and and innovation. Um, yeah, you don't need me to tell you. Uh, you know, the bill the bill didn't make it through the uh, the legislative um, process, and yes, I'm limited in what I can say about that in the in the pre-election um, period. But we do have actually a range of existing obligations um, in the UK, which are also uh, very relevant. So I'll, I can use that as a an alternative starting point. So even even absent um, DPDI. What, what existing uh, obligations do we have? Well, since uh, since 2014, so you know, for 10 years, um, you know, the ICO has, like all other regulators in the UK, had responsibilities under the regulators' code here to consider how we might uh, support or enable growth for compliant uh, organisations in addition to, I should say, a wide range of other um, you know, sort of regulatory obligations and, and good practice um, measures. In addition, um, we, under the uh, Deregulation Act of 2015, have a statutory duty to have regard to the desirability um, of promoting economic growth, what's, what's referred to as the, the growth uh, duty. And this was uh, this was refreshed and, and updated um, by the uh, Department for Business and Trade um, earlier this year, uh, following a following a consultation um, process. So you know, I, I should be I should be clear. Um, yeah, well, as the guidance refresh um, is, this isn't about um, you know legitimising non-compliance with uh, with other duties or objectives. Um, it's not about the pursuit of economic growth, for example, at the expense of other, uh, you know, of, of, of necessary protections. That obviously wouldn't be good for data subjects. Um, you know, it wouldn't be good for, uh, you know, the interests of compliant controllers um, either. Rather, it's about, um, yeah, enabling uh, these these other objectives: competition, growth, innovation, in ways that are uh, compliant with uh, with the law. And you know, like other um, UK regulators, the ICO will be required to, to report um, on, our, on our sort of activities um, you know, that, that we undertake to meet these uh, meet, meet the uh, the growth duty. So this um, this idea of, of balance, it's in the legislation, it's in um, it's in current obligations, um, and it's also in in many of our you know seen in many of our existing um, activities, which seek to. Uh, you know, enable um, data protection compliance in, and innovation, and through these, you know, further competition and and economic growth. So I'm sure uh, I'm sure people are familiar with uh, with many of these already. But we have, for example, the uh, the regulatory sandbox, 
um, I think got to mention got to mention earlier, but that that helps organisations who um, you know are intending to uh, or are in the process of developing uh, you know new innovative products and services uh, you know that that use personal data uh, in the public interest. We also have uh, more recently the innovation advice um, service. That's that's one to provide fast, direct um, sort of feedback for organisations that are doing new or innovative things uh, with with personal data. Um, you know, it's designed to help solve problems that might be holding up um, you know deployment of uh, of some new service, for example. We've also got the uh, the innovation hub. Uh, which advises um, sort of pre-market innovators, people who might be developing or testing, um, you know, new services, um, you know, that are using personal data in, in sort of new uh, new ways. And we have uh, certification um, as well, um, you know, helping to demonstrate data protection in in practical ways, and you know, show the value of uh, of, uh, of uh, you know, compliance with uh, with the law. And then finally, here uh, got advice for for small organisations. Um, we used to call this the the SME Service Hub, um, but uh, yeah, it's been been rebranded. That provides um, you know, advice and guidance to to all sorts of, of small organisations, not just businesses, but you know, non profit uh, organisations as well. So these yeah these obligations um, uh, you know, present present in many of our um, our current activities. And as well, um, you know, in just the same way as there are balances to be struck between different objectives in data protection, there are also, um, you know, so within the, the data protection regime, there are also, as we've been hearing, um, interactions between data protection regulation and other regulatory regimes. And, you know, as touched on, touched on earlier today, but, yeah, uh, you know, particularly in the case of, of digital markets, um, you know, given the central role that that data, that personal data, um, you know, play in uh, in online business models, um, you know, these link together um, the interests of competition, consumer protection, and uh, and data protection um, regulators. So some of the uh, some of the things I can uh, I can briefly show you here are um, some of the some of the joint work that we've done with with our DRCF Digital Regulation Cooperation part, uh, Forum partners. Uh, so first of all, here uh, I mean back in back in 2021, um, joint statement with the uh, with the CMA about the the interactions between um, competition and and data protection. Um, more recently, um, joint work with uh, and a statement with uh, with Ofcom um, on the uh, you know the linkages between online safety and and data protection. Back with the uh, back with the CMA, um, you know we've done work with them on uh, harmful design uh, in, uh, in in online markets. So looking at online choice architecture, behavioural biases. We'll come back to that. Um, a little in in, uh, in a moment, and then there's also uh, you know uh, joint work, but in but in bilateral settings, um, such as our work with the uh, the CMA um, in relation to uh, Google's uh, privacy sandbox. So I can just go into one of these in, in a little bit of detail. I want to take competition and uh, and data protection um, as a as a bit of an example. So we set out in the uh, in the joint statement on this um, how with the CMA how we believe that there are there are strong synergies between the interests of uh, competition and uh, and data protection. Uh, there can also you know we recognise be be tensions there, um, but yeah as we explained in in the document we think that we can uh, you know, we can these we can work through these. Um, and I'll, uh, I'll, I'll show you a little bit of how and how, how economics can also help us to, to understand you know, why, why problems might arise. <laughs> 